I know a lot of people talk about sidechain as if it's some sort of magic top advanced secret thing that you should learn. But I think it's still something that you can do so easily in the box that it's not really an advanced technique. It's still harder to deliver a steady mix, uh, well balanced with enough dynamics. And I'm going to show you in this video a couple of extra things that you can use to play around with uh, the sidechain technique and sidechain usage, uh, trying to make your sound a bit more interesting, a bit more dynamic, and for you to have more strategies instead of just making everything duck whenever your kick drum hits. Uh, straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and today I did this example. I'm going to be using Reacomp for the first part of the video, and we will also show it with third-party plugins, and we will explore another fun trick with this idea. So first thing first, if you have never heard about sidechain, what it actually is, is just using a track, in this case, for example, my kick drum up top here, and sending it into the detection circuit of a compressor, that's this second track here that's called Chords. And both of these tracks sound like this. And the thing that's going on is I have a compressor set on my keys track, but it's not listening for the keys, the detection input, it's actually listening to the key drum that's coming in from another track. For that to be able to be done, you just need to do it as a send. Remember that in Reaper 7, you can just drag from your send section in your mixer and drag it on top of a plugin and it's going to be sent immediately into three and four. And Reacom that I have it set up on my keyboard with a shortcut, in this case, option, control, uh, and that button, uh, underscore. I have it as a fast loading plugin, so I can just hit my keyboard and there, there it is, right? And it loads every single time like that by just looking it up with edit shortcut. In any single plugin, you can do that. The second thing that you might need to do in the case of Reaper is that you need to assign the detection input to the auxiliary inputs. I'm going to show you that if I select the main inputs, what the compressor will be reacting to is the chords themselves. If I change the detection input to the main inputs, to the actual keys, this is how it sounds. And I can even see in the metering that it's not pumping as a kick drum, it's not moving as a kick drum. If I change this to the auxiliary inputs, since I'm sending my kick into the three and four that I can check in the plugin pin connector, and I can see that the track channel three and four is coming into the auxiliary inputs. Now when I see what's coming in, that's a kick drum, right? And now this is actually going to make my keys pump a lot more. One thing that you have to be careful is that if you're using any sort of plugin is that any sort of virtual instrument is that it's not taking the input, the outputs three and four for something. So in case it was something like this, the problem is that it will get mixed with the keys and the kick would go through this three and four. So be careful with that, deactivate it. You only need your three and four to go through. If I turn these two off and I hit play again, I have it going in. But if I use these two, That's something that might happen, just be aware of it. Unplug this, let the three and four go through and let your kick drum actually hit your rear camp. Another really important thing is to understand that you can actually filter signal that you're, sh that you're shoving into the compressor. In case you're using a kick drum, this really works because the lower frequencies have a bigger sustain, so you need a shorter control signal that can actually just make the compressor go down. That's the most basic usage of something like uh, a sidechain compression technique. Uh, with this, we actually got to the French house style and you would get something closer to this. Mm -hmm. 
and we all know that sound. It doesn't have to be so aggressive every single time, but just remember that that's the most basic side of it. If you want to make it a bit more interesting, I have a video on how to make any single plugin mid-side. Uh, I will link it in the, in the description. I will be loading the mid-side encoder and decoder in the proper order, and I will shove this rear comp right in the middle of those two, and now it, it will look like this. More or less, this is the chain that I am using. The channel one is going to be the mid and the channel two is going to be the side. So I'm only going to plug the sides of my compressor and I'm still listening to the three and four for my sidechain input. I'm going to check it. And I can check it in several ways. What I can try and do is really not compress anything and I should listen to everything on the sides. I'm going to solo only the keys I'm going to change my send instead of being post fader to pre fader post effects. That way my kick drum is always at the same level. It doesn't matter how much I'm adjusting my mix after this. And I should still be looking at this gain reduction move to the beat of the kick drum when I start lowering this. Because even with this in solo, the kick drum will get to my rear comp. that's working, right? So I'm going to not compress at the beginning and I'm going to start lowering the sides. And I can listen to that going actually happening, right? It could make sense to make the sides dip or, or dock whenever something hits. That could be useful. Think of your arrangements, think of the music that you're making, and that could be a feeling that you might want. But in this case, maybe I just want space in the middle for the kick drum. So I'm going to change it to the myth. So I might just want it to dock the myth so that my kick drum has more space in the center. And let's try it like that. Let's try it with a kick drum. And I'm going to show you something that maybe not too many people really talk about. And is that that strange hollow feeling that you get when I am docking all of the mid signal is only the side signal. And that sounds out of phase. That's strange because there's a certain aesthetic to it that might work sometimes, but not every single genre benefits from it. So just be careful with that hollow sound that you feel because that's bringing the signal really out of phase. If you want to make your compressor really, really fast, like just manage it, micromanage it as, as needed. And there will be many suggestions that it has to recover just before the next hit. Just find your own timing that works for you. Don't follow any rules because there are no rules. You might want it to recover every eighth note, every 16th note, every quarter note, whatever feels good for the music you're making. That's what you should be doing. So you can dock only the mid or you can dock only the side with something like this. So another fun thing that you might want to try out when doing this sidechain stuff is Instead of just using a compressor, I what I did is I imported a clavi sound that's really, really short, and I can access the routing of the track through the action list or the mixer. I'm going to disable the master send. This means that I won't be listening to this clavi sound on the main output. It's not playing. It's still not playing. But I can use it as a send for controlling anything in any other track. I want to use a clavi sound because this is really, really short and I could even edit it so it's as sharp as possible regarding the length of the sound itself because that's what I want. I want precision across time. I could try using any multiband compressor for this or any dynamic EQ for this, but maybe the plugin that you're using doesn't have the option for it to listen to another track, as I showed previously with the RIA comp. In this case, the RIA X comp is fantastic, but it doesn't let me uh, detect any other track that's incoming. So we will do a nice Reaper trick with this. I'm going to use the re-EQ, that's part of the RIA pack that you can download for free. 
And with this one, what I will end up doing is selecting the range of the keys that I want to dock. And I'm, I'm building my own dynamic EQ, as, as you can see. And after moving the last parameter, in this case, gain, this is the one that I want to move, I will select parameter, parameter modulation link, and I will link this to the audio control signal where I can select my input three and four. That's the clavy sound because I disabled the kick drum send into the chords track. Now, if I hit play, I can also see that I'm actually receiving the clavi into this parameter modulation. Remember that you have to first get the sensitivity correct for this type of modulation because it's being based on another track. This first fader is the baseline of the parameter that you're moving. Since I want my gain to start in zero, I will leave it in the beginning and I want it to move negatively instead of adding dBs. Then I will select the minimum volume that it will listen to, that's minus 60 dB, and this is the threshold to which the gain of my equalizer will react to. And I can bring it safely all the way to the bottom because I can just adjust it with the strength as needed and I can just adjust the timings, attack and release as needed. And maybe I want this to be 50 milliseconds of release, zero of attack because I want it to dock instantly and I will just adjust it with the strength. If we take this idea a little bit further, what I can do is not only make something move like that, what I can also make is maybe just use a low shelf because I only want space in the lower register, in the lower frequency spectrum, and maybe only dock that low end. Let's listen it against the kick drum. without this modulated sidechain thing. With it. And since you can do this in any single uh, order or movement that you might feel it's proper, it opens up a lot of ways of dealing with uh, sidechain. If I go back to the REAX comp, if you have a multiband compressor that can react to an external input, I'm going to load another EQ. I'm going to select only this range of the keys. I'm going to activate the dynamic section of this EQ, removing the auto, and I'm going to turn this compressor into an expander. So for every dB that I get in, I want to output three more dBs, and this is working as an expander, an upward expander. I'm going to manage again my attenuation times, my attack and my release times, and I'm going to make it more or less fast, and I'm going just to look with the threshold, activate the sidechain, coming externally. I don't need to filter it because I'm listening to a clavy sound right here, so I don't need to filter it at all. If for any reason your plugin is not reacting properly, just check the plugin connector and check that the plugin pins are connected properly. One to one, two to two. Usually sidechain inputs are three and four. Just check that. And there's another way to add some extra excitement. For example, you could do that with the bass relating to the drum. Maybe you want the only the highest part of the bass to move a little bit up whenever the kick drum hits. So you actually get that complete thump and complete hit from both of them if they are playing at really at the same time.
<clears throat> in case you didn't have, or in case your plugin doesn't have some sort of filtering built in for the sidechain section, I'm going to go back to Reacomp. Let's suppose for a moment that this one doesn't have these filtering options. What I would do is I would just send my signal first to something like this. That's another track that's I'm, that I'm going to be calling filter kick. I'm going to send my kick drum first to the filter kick. Here, I will add an EQ. I will filter it as needed. Let's make it really narrow, almost a band pass. And from there, I'm going to hold option and drag into my chords or straight into the plugin. I'm holding option because that immediately disables the master send whenever I'm making a send. So this filtered kick won't come out to the main mix and it will only be sent towards my chords track. And now I have a filtered version of it that I can feed into the auxiliary input of any third party plugin that might not have a filter section in the sidechain input. Those are some fun ways and some more creative ways to start thinking about sidechain. I really encourage you to start thinking of ways to move your instruments. If you're only relying on the composition, that's great. Uh, great songs are needed always. But for you to actually get some something that's only you in the sound domain, you need to start thinking of signal flow. You need to start of how in things are interacting. Try any of these tricks with any combination that you feel like. And let me know in the comments if you thought of something or if this opened up some sort of new vision of how to work around with dynamic reaction between your instruments. That's something I really enjoy when mixing any project. I will be talking a little bit more about uh, balancing and using EQs with more of the philosophic well, way of thinking about them and not only about the technical side of them. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell straight from Mexico City. My name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.